My name is Monika Östensen. I am from the Department of Rheumatology, Sir Leonard Hospital, Kristiansand, Norway. And I will discuss with you some aspects of drug toxicity during pregnancy and lactation. Treating pregnant lupus patients is a challenge because uh, lupus is a um, um, multi-organ disease and in addition many patients do have comorbidities that also may require treatment during pregnancy. So what is the aim uh, of medications during pregnancy? It's a, a treat to target strategy. The target is remission or low stable disease activity during pregnancy and of course a successful pregnancy outcome and a healthy baby. So by uh, medications we want to prevent a flare during pregnancy and when using medications they must be adjusted to be pregnancy compatible drugs. In lupus uh, we uh, have several uh, drugs which can be used. These include hydroxychloroquine, azathioprine, cyclosporine, or tacrolimus, and prednisone to support remission. Obviously, obviously we need to discontinue teratogenic or fetotoxic drugs, which include cyclophosphamide, methotrexate and mycophenolate derivates. And these need to be stopped well ahead of a planned pregnancy. Several adjustments of therapy must be made. For example, if you have a patient who had previous lupus nephritis and is on maintenance therapy with mycophenolate morphetil. Uh, drugs, uh, mycophenolate needs to be changed and can be substituted by azathioprine or tacrolimus prior to or uh, during pregnancy. In women with lupus and a secondary antiphospholipid syndrome, warfarin should be switched to heparin at a positive pregnancy test. And patients treated with angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers should be switched to other antihypertensives because these drugs are teratogenic. It's very important that lupus patients remain on their basic therapy, which uh, is uh, hydroxychloroquine. Several studies have clearly shown that patients who continue hydroxychloroquine during pregnancy have less SLE activity. They even uh, have less risk to develop preeclampsia and they have less need for prednisone use. This requires that they continue hydroxychloroquine throughout pregnancy. It has been shown that patients who stop hydroxychloroquine before pregnancy or during pregnancy have an increased risk of flare of lupus with an odds ratio 3.6. Recently, the benefits of hydroxychloroquine have also been shown in pregnancies of women with antiphospholipid syndrome uh, who do not um, respond well to the standard therapy. In these patients, several retrospective studies have shown that addition of hydroxychloroquine to standard therapy reduces the risk for pregnancy loss and other complications during pregnancy. Now, 
the treatment of women with um, mild uh, lupus symptoms is more or less straightforward uh, by continuing hydroxychloroquine or maybe uh, in addition azathioprine and low-dose corticosteroids. However, women with severe organ manifestations like renal disease or uh, pulmonary disease uh, need uh, uh, treatment throughout pregnancy with more potent medications. Uh, one problem in lupus patients is uh, lupus nephritis, particularly uh, if they enter pregnancy with active lupus nephritis or they get a flare of lupus nephritis. And the risk for adverse outcomes both in mother and child increases for preeclampsia three to four times and for premature delivery two to three times. We have a few patients with lupus who have pulmonary arterial hypertension. And these patients actually should be discouraged to become pregnant because of still a high risk of mortality, up to 25 or even more percent. The most vulnerable period is around delivery and during the first two weeks postpartum. So these patients uh, need special managing by an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary team and they need treatment throughout pregnancy with vasodilators. Uh, they need to um, be, be uh, anticoagulated with low uh, molecular weight heparin and they may need combination therapies uh, if um, prostaglandin analogs do not work sufficiently alone. Now let's turn to another question. Is there a role for biologics in pregnant lupus patients? And the biologics uh, which are of interest are rituximab and belimumab both are B-cell inhibitors. But also other drugs um, have been under investigation like abatacept, a, a T-cell activation inhibitor, and tocilizumab, an IL-6 inhibitor. It's interesting to think that perhaps rituximab uh, could be an option for patients uh, who uh, have shown in the non-pregnant state um, a propensity for flare, which has been difficult to treat. So the question is, could one avoid serious lupus flares in pregnancy by giving rituximab just before a planned pregnancy? And when you look at the uh, elimination time for rituximab, it's about uh, 110 days, five times um, uh, half-life. Uh, one could think of that a woman could attempt conception 3.5 months after the last rituximab infusion without harm to the fetus. And actually, this has been confirmed by case series that have shown that exposure within 12 to 0 months before conception or during very early pregnancy did not result in B-cell depletion in the child, nor were there observed other harmful effects on the child. Other possibilities uh, to treat organ manifestations um, uh, during pregnancy and lupus patients is tacrolimus. Um, there are unfortunately only 
um, few case series uh, that have looked at tacrolimus as an uh, alternative treatment for active lupus or lupus nephritis in pregnancy. In 12 uh, pregnant women with lupus or lupus nephritis, uh, the, uh, they were treated with tacrolimus either to maintain remission or treat a flare during pregnancy. And the result of these case series showed that uh, patient, uh, patients treated with tacrolimus throughout pregnancy had either no flare, no uh, organ manifestation, or uh, there was a successful treatment of, for example, a flare of lupus nephritis. Also, there was observed reduction of adverse pregnancy outcomes in patients refractory to standard therapy. And one more important observation, the, patient didn't need, the patients didn't need uh, high dose corticoids for a prolonged time during pregnancy. The last point uh, I will discuss with you is breastfeeding. Uh, the uh, several studies have shown that mothers with lupus have lower rates of breastfeeding than their healthy peers. In one study, the comparison showed only 5.6% of lupus mothers did breastfeed compared to nearly 20% of healthy peers. Also, lupus women breastfeed for a shorter time period. When we, uh, women with lupus were asked uh, whether they intended to breastfeed after delivery, about 50% of the lupus patients wanted to breastfeed. But when they made uh, negative experiences, for example, a flare during pregnancy uh, or premature delivery uh, or a flare after delivery, then uh, few of them uh, really did proceed to breastfeeding. And it came also about that the decision for breastfeeding must be made early in pregnancy and the patient needs counseling and support to uh, breastfeed after delivery. Uh, this table shows uh, lupus medications during lactation and um, you see the drug name and the relative infant dose and then uh, uh, whether the drug is compatible with lactation. And we see that um, there are uh, several non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, ibuprofen, low-dose aspirin, uh, that are compatible uh, with lactation. Prednisone in low doses up to 20 or even 30 milligram a day is compatible with breastfeeding, hydroxychloroquine, azathioprine, cyclosporine, and tacrolimus are all compatible with pregnancy. They, uh, the child um, will receive only minimal doses during breastfeeding. We have no studies for mycophenolate morphotil and uh, passage of the drug to breast milk. So therefore, uh, mycophenolate morphotil should be avoided uh, during breastfeeding. Methotrexate, uh, experts disagree whether it can be used or not. We have three uh, case studies where methotrexate was measured um, in breast milk. As we can see, it's a minimal amount appearing in breast milk, 
So the infant would ingest a very small dose, less than 1%. And some experts um, think it could be used with caution, for example, not breastfeeding on the day of injection or per oral dose of methotrexate. Uh, cyclophosphamide um, enters breast milk uh, and can have harmful effects on the bre breastfed child. It should be avoided. Rituximab, we have one case report showing a minimal amount of rituximab enters breast milk. It's a large molecule. Um, it should not be absorbed as an IgG molecule by the child. Uh, the same is true for, for bilimumab, again uh, um, IgG molecule, uh, which may not be absorbed by the child. So, to conclude about uh, uh, medications during pregnancy and lactation, the most important uh, is that we address family planning actively in patients of fertile age and counsel them on all drugs they are using. They need to know why they should continue some medications and why others have to be discontinued. We will adjust therapy to pregnancy compatible drugs according to disease activity at conception during pregnancy and during lactation. And the target of therapy is to maintain or to achieve low disease activity or remission during pregnancy and lactation. Thank you.